app and register your attendance here today. If you do not have a mobile device, a paper record is at the information table for you to provide your details. Could you please ensure that all mobile phones are switched off or on silent? Smoking is not permitted in or around this building. The nearest restrooms are located at either end of the building on each floor. There is no access beyond the third floor today unless you are participating in a guided tour. In the unlikely event of an emergency, please do not use the lifts. If we are required to evacuate the building, make your way to the nearest exit and head towards the SAM rebuilding next door. You will have the opportunity to ask questions to our student panel and academic staff at the end of the presentation, so please hold your questions until then. This session is being streamed and recorded on YouTube and will be available to review online in the coming weeks. Those joining us online today, make sure you are logged into your YouTube so that you can ask questions via the live chat. We will be monitoring the online questions and we'll try to get through as many as we can. <clears throat> oh, sorry, there's a COVID check in app. Um, I'd like to now take a moment to acknowledge the Ghana people, the original custodians of the Adelaide Plains and the land on which the University of Adelaide campuses at North Terrace, Waite and Roseworthy are built. To get started, let's take a look at the Faculty of Health and Medical Sciences in more detail, including the facilities you'll be studying in and learn where our degree offerings are positioned globally. Now that we've had a look at the faculty as a whole, we will now focus on Allied Health. Students of the School of Allied Health and Practice are taught by specialist staff in combinations of brand new purposely built training facilities, state of the art simulation and anatomy and physiology lab laboratories. <clears throat> Established in 2018, the museum contains the most extensive collection of examples of human disease and detailed anatom <laughs> sorry, anatomical prosections in South Australia. Our inventory has in excess of 2,000 potted specimens for students to access during classes and in private study time. The immersion room was launched just before the height of the coronavirus pandemic with the aim to boost student engagement and empathy. The immersion room allows students to witness medical procedures or scenarios in a life-size environment with 360 degree videos and images projected on surrounding walls. Students can walk in and really feel like they are there in that environment. This cutting edge technology transports students to any destination in Australia, perhaps a rural environment or a hospital area they might find it hard to access. Here you can see the newly opened rehab rehabilitation gym. The space is flexible in design, exclusive to students of the School of Allied Health and Practice. Other spaces include physiotherapy workshop, 
occupational therapy hub with student learning kitchens, bathrooms and sensory space. Also opening soon are dedicated speech pathology spaces, which will allow students to use specialist tools and pr practice various patient assessments processes. This will include a suite that has been acoustically modified to explore the assessment and analysis of voice samples. Our Ray Last Laboratories are home to the statewide body donation program and is where students have the unique privilege of examining real human anatomy and species. This allows students to translate the information received in textbooks, lectures, tutorials and digital technologies into the real life environment. Now that we've looked at where you'll be studying, it's time to take a more in-depth look at our allied health suites of degrees. It is my pleasure to introduce Dr Judy Nan, Senior Lecturer in the School of Allied Health and Practice, who is here with us today to talk you through physiotherapy, occupational therapy and speech pathology at the University of Adelaide. Studying physiotherapy here at Adelaide will give you the capability to help people get the most out of life. You'll learn how to help people recover from injury, reduce pain and stiffness, increase mobility and prevent further injury. You'll graduate with fantastic career opportunities, ready to have a significant and lasting impact on the well-being and quality of life of children and adults. Thanks very much, Domenica. So I'm here, I'm the academic lead for learning and teaching in the school and I look after some of the earlier years in the program and we've also got our program heads here um, for questions later. So um, Bachelor of Physiotherapy is a four-year full-time course. We only have a, a beginning of the year intake. We only um, start in February. And in your first year, you'll study human anatomy, biomechanics and pathophysiology. And you'll be learning from um, all of our practicing and registered physiotherapists to gain knowledge in evidence-based patient-centered care and develop skills in patient handling and education. We also explore some of the broader public health issues, um, cultural diversity and general psychology. When I put the program structure up in a minute, I'll talk you through that just a little bit more about what the program looks like. Um, and as you move through the program, you'll undertake clinical assessment and, ma um, and management of patients with cardiothoracic, musculoskeletal, neurological dysfunction and chronic disease. So if we have a look at what that looks like, I will talk about year one in detail and this is a lot of this is common to the first uh, to all of the programs. So I'll talk about it here, and then I, I'll just touch on it briefly in the others. So in year one, in the first semester, you've got um, anatomy, you've got anatomy and physiology, and you've also got a course in health and well-being, which is around community and global health and well-being determinants of health. So we're looking at some of the things within our community and our environment that might determine our health. So some of the upstream factors in how people end up with particular conditions. We have our Introduction to Professional Practice course. So in physiotherapy, this is an introduction to physiotherapy. And students will start to learn actually what does it mean to be a physiotherapist. So this gives you an idea about is this is what I've signed up for, what do I want? You get a really good idea about what a physiotherapists do and you start to develop your professional identity and your professional practice. The last course in first semester is a communication in professional practice course. And this is all about how do you communicate in a professional environment? What are the skills that you're going to need when something unexpected might happen? Because Communicating in a professional environment is much different to communicating in just your social environment where you get to choose maybe who you talk to, when you talk to them. In a professional environment, there are other skills that you'll need. So we touch on those and we do that early so that you can then start to develop those through your program so that by the time you get to your clinical pro um, practice programs, you're well and truly ready to go and feeling very comfortable in that, that clinical environment and confident in your skills. From year, the end of year one and into year two, we start to get into the more specialised physiotherapy courses. So we get into more detailed applied anatomy, um, biomechanics, some of the principles behind physiotherapy management. So when somebody's come to you with something and, you know, my back hurts, my leg hurts, whatever, whatever issue it is, how are you actually going to manage that and help that person regain function? 
and also the pathophysiology of what's going on. So in first year, we're looking all about how do bodies work, what's normal in a body, and then in second year, we get into, well, what happens when things start to go wrong? Then in years three and four, we start to get into the specialised practice practice. Um, principles. So this is including your age-specific or gender-specific needs. So this is in in the first couple of years, you might have just in a more general sense gone, oh, if, if somebody's got a back injury, this, that or the other thing. But then as we move further through, what if this person is a young person? What if this person is an older person? What, is, what else is it that's going on with them? We also do some specialty content relating to clinical assessment and management of clients. So we've looked around, you know, the different areas of practice in physiotherapy. So this is a really great opportunity because it gives you the chance to experience not just you may have, you may come in with a particular idea of where you want to go as a physio, but this will give you a chance to experience all of the areas of practice. And you may actually we often find that students come in with a particular idea of they want to be this this sort of physio, you know, musculoskeletal or whatever it might be. And then when they experience some of the other options, they go, oh, there's that cool thing that I didn't actually really know that physios did. So you get to experience all of those different areas of practice. And you also get quite a lot of clinical placement courses where you're learning in a professional, pra in a professional setting under the supervision of clinical um, physiotherapists. So once you've done your course, if we start to think about career opportunities, where can this take you? You've got masses of opportunities and different options. So you gain the professional qualification that's recognised Australia-wide, but not just Australia-wide. There's also, you get the opportunity to apply for registrations in a number of countries around the world and our um, qualifications are recognised across those countries with various agreements. Um, so. Physios can work in public and private hospitals. You can work in community healthcare. You can work in sporting organisations, rehab centres. There's also opportunities in research. So sometimes people may end up in a career that, you know, you may have started thinking one thing and ended up somewhere completely different. So I'm going to move on now to the Bachelor of Occupational Therapy. And I'm hoping that the video... Will... Studying occupational therapy here at Adelaide will prepare you to strengthen communities by helping people do what they want and need to do in all areas of their lives. You'll learn how to analyse, support and evaluate meaningful activities and tasks, such as doing our jobs, learning, socialising and playing, and simply looking after ourselves. You'll graduate with fantastic career opportunities ready to help children, adults and entire communities restore meaning and purpose and promote health and wellbeing. So again, if I look at a bit of a summary of the occupational therapy program, again, you're going to study anatomy, physiology and pathophysiology. You'll be learning at looking at rehab in short and long term injuries and it might have been caused by illness, disability, congenital, it could be from anything. So we'll look at musculoskeletal neurological conditions, chronic illness, disability. Um, those of you that have come to talk to us in the booth today, I think, and have discussed occupational therapy are starting to realise how broad occupational therapy can be. Um, and if you haven't, haven't come to chat to us, please do feel free. Um, we'll give you the skills that you need to practice with children and families. And we're also looking at population health issues and population approaches that it can improve the health and wellbeing of the community. We'll be looking at cultural diversity, particularly with a particular focus on Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people and communities, and as well as rural and international health. So again, you'll be looking at getting the skills you need to be able to practice and implement evidence-based practice. So if you, we look at the structure again, it's similar. We've got the year one where we've got some common courses, which are our bioscience, health and wellbeing, and communication courses in semester one, and then you've got your intro introduction to occupational science. And then in uh, semester two, everybody does evidence-based practice, and then you start, and pathophysiology, and then you start to get into, actually, sorry, pathophysiology is in second year, biosciences again. Um, and then you start to get into your more uh, program-specific uh, courses. 
Then in year two, we've got detailed applied anatomy of both the lower and upper knee limbs, and we've got pathophysiology, so again, first year. How does the body work? In second year, what's to, what do we do when things start to go wrong? We look at pre preparation for professional practice, and we also give you the opportunity to focus on a rural or international health perspective. In year three, we start to get into the more clinical-based courses. So we're focusing on specialised practice principles and we've got children and families, musculoskeletal, neurological and mental health across the lifespan. And then in year four, you've got the opportunity to apply the learning and professional practice settings. And you also got an advanced practice in your honours, you've either got an advanced practice stream or a research stream. Again, when we look at career opportunities, you've got your qualification recognised around Australia and the opportunity to register in numbers of countries around the world. Um, physio, uh, sorry, occupational therapists have a massively diverse uh, practice areas. We've got pri public and private hospitals, community healthcare, mental health, rehab centres, research. You'll also find occupational therapists in schools. You find occupational therapists in policy development. So there's many, many opportunities in occupational therapy. So your career can take you wherever you're interested, really. People, you'll find people find their niche. Now if I move on to speech pathology. Studying speech pathology here at Adelaide will give you the capability to transform people's lives through the power of learn how to help people overcome a broad range of challenges to develop ways to communicate, including the physical, developmental and cultural. You'll graduate with fantastic career opportunities, ready to enable people's deepest, most rewarding connections at every stage of life. Okay, so again, I'm just going to give a brief overview of the program and the things that you'll study in the program. So obviously we've got head and neck anatomy, which is absolutely vital for speech pathology and neurophysiology. You will also do bioscience in general. So you'll do the same bioscience uh, courses in semester one and two of first year. And the reason for that is that the whole body is connected. So we can't be looking at the body as just from the neck up. We need to be looking at, at the whole body and what's going on. Um, you'll study communication development, linguistics and word formation. And again, you'll be looking at a broad range of public health care and general psychology. You'll be looking at cultural diversity and working with clients, clients who have languages other than English and including Indigenous Australian languages. And this is a great opportunity. And again, looking at the skills required for evidence-based patient-centred care. So this is the program overall. So as I said, we've got that first year where we've got our three common courses in semester one. They're a really great opportunity. They give you the opportunity to start to learn um, and know some of the people in the other professions. So we get an interprofessional learning happening there where you can start to be learning um, with and from whoever. So if you're doing speech pathology, you might, you'll be learning with people in occupational therapy and physio. So all of that fits into a nice rounded package around starting to become a member of that healthcare team and team-based principles. Um, and again, we've got that introduction to speech pathology and a focus on speech pathology principle. From second year onwards, we're looking at how you're developing your profession. So you're focusing on typical communication development. So what are we, ex you know, if we're looking at paediatrics, what are the milestones that we'd be expecting to see from children? Um, we're looking at linguistics, psychology, and advanced anatomical structures of the head and neck because speech pathologists are not just talking about uh, helping people with speech and voice. They're also helping people with swallowing and swallowing difficulties. And we talk about the importance of client-centred care and what, is, what does that mean? What, what are we talking about when we're talking about client-centred care? In years three and four, we start to get into more clinical placement and clinical practice settings. Um, and we've got analysis of words and impact of swallowing difficulties. If somebody can't swallow, how's that affecting them and co uh, cultural diversity? And then you'll be starting to learn to diagnose and treat speech and language problems. So things like stuttering, 
voice and swallowing difficulties which might be caused by developmental delay or a brain injury or a chronic disease. So, for example, if somebody's got a chronic disease where they're starting to lose control of their speech, then we'd work with clients to try and preserve that for as long as possible and work out how to maintain communication as that might progress. Um, and in the clinical placement courses, you'll be applying all of that learning in professional practice settings under the supervision of our qualified speech pathologists. Um, if you choose speech pathology, we now have also got the opportunity to offer you the um, chance to study a diploma of arts or languages at the same time. We've had quite a lot of students who come to speech pathology because they've got an, an interest in language or in, in the arts. So we now have a pathway where you're able to get that diploma at the same time as you're getting your speech pathology qualification. And we've got a, a study plan so that you're not having to overload or try and juggle that. We've actually got a, a stream for you to do that and then graduate at the end of five years instead of four with the Bachelor of Speech Pathology Honours and your Diploma of Language or Arts. Um, and we've got the opportunity for a linguistics major. So that's a really great opportunity to be able to have a couple of strings to your bow. If we look at the career opportunities for speech pathology, Again, you get that qualification that's recognised Australia-wide and in many countries around the world. And you've got opportunities to work in early childhood intervention, community health care, mental health, aged care, rehabilitation, public, private hospitals. So again, there's many practice settings that you'd be able to work in. So I'm going to hand back to Domenica now, who's going to talk about how you apply and uh, then I think we'll get to some questions after that. Just give me one moment. <coughs> okay. So apply to study with us. Admissions to all allied health degrees are based slowly, solely on the prerequisite subject requirements and a minimum ATAR of 90 or above, an equivalent with other entry pathways. Whilst we list the 90 ATAR or equivalent as the minimum threshold, these are competitive entry degrees and so the higher your academic score is, the more competitive your application will be. Applicants all, must also meet the minimum English language requirements. The, pre, the prerequisites common between the three degree, degrees are one subject from chemistry, mathematics or biology. Bachelor of Speech Pathology Honours has a prerequisite subject of English in addition to those shared with the other two. Our student experience. So we're just going to show you a quick video of the student experience. We're very blessed in Adelaide to have a strong learning environment and culture. Both staff and students are very supportive of everyone reaching a certain standard. And the exciting thing about working in health is that you're always a part of a team. Now that I'm in second year, I've signed up to become a peer mentor, which means I can interact with first year students to help them feel more comfortable as they transition into uni life. There's a buddy mentorship program that I've met people through and when I was in younger years they'd, they'd help support me and inspire me and they've honestly almost become like my family in a way. When I was looking for guidance on my subjects in about year two I spoke to the support staff in the Helen Mayo building and they really helped me figure out what was best for me academically but also for my future careers. It was really good knowing that I'm not alone and I have got support from the actual faculty. The cohort I went through with are really great. We're um, a supportive group, we have a Facebook chat, and um, we organise catch-ups, coffee days, and we study together, which I think is really important, especially coming up to exams. It's great to have that support network and that study framework too. What I've found from the first day up until this last year is that the lecturers are actually there for us and they actually really love to help us and they're always there for any questions. I was quite nervous moving interstate to study this degree but I was rest assured within the first week that I was well supported by lots of colleagues and like-minded people and there was lots of events as well that helped me build some lifelong friendships. So 
So with our faculty student support, our aim is that your transition to your future studies is as smooth as it can be. Our dedicated us health team are here to support you through your studies with everything from enrolments to an orientation through to graduation. We also have dedicated su support services available for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people to assist you through the application process and your time with us. The scholarships team at the University of Adelaide lists available scholarships for all prospective and currently enrolled students on their website. We encourage all students to take some time to visit the website and apply for any scholarships that you may be eligible for. We also want your time with us to be rewarding life and a life-changing experience. Getting involved with student clubs and societies will give you an opportunity to challenge yourself and expand your social connections. With over 100 clubs to choose from across the university, there is a crowd for everyone. We now have the opportunity to meet some more of our academic staff who coordinate and teach into the allied health degrees. They will share their experiences in their respective areas and answer your questions about what it is like to study allied health at the University of Adelaide. We'd like to keep the questions broad, so if you have any specific admissions related questions, we ask that you please save these for one-on-one -on -one conversations or email. For those of you in person, Raise your hand if you have a question. And for those online, please remember that you need to be logged in to your YouTube account to ask a question via chat. To get started, I will hand it over to Judy, who will facilitate the Q&A. But if um, each of our academics could introduce yourselves uh, and what your role is here at the university in a brief, brief background, um, and then we'll open the floor to questions. Hi, guys. Uh, my name is Stacey Actual. I'm the program head for the Bachelor of Speech Pathology Honours. Um, I'm really, really chuffed to be here to see you all today. I have been working at the university now for just over six months. I came over from Flinders University. Um, we have our first cohort um, who are now a semester deep into their four-year program. Um, they're having a, a wonderful time. Um, and we split our teaching between uh, here, up at AHMS, and also down the other end of uh, North Terrace at Helen Mayo. Um, so I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys with your questions. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hi, I'm Paul Rothmore. I'm the uh, Program Head for Physiotherapy. I've been a physio for nearly 30 years now, worked in a, a variety of different roles. Uh, the one role I didn't see myself going into when I was an undergraduate was an academic, but I couldn't have thought of a worse job when I was an undergraduate, being teaching a bunch of students, but 30 years later, here I am, and uh, really enjoying it. As Stacey said, we're, uh, our first cohort of students is nearing the end of their first semester. Our physio students have been out on placement, observational placements already, so they're already getting some real-life practical experience in, to get a better understanding of what uh, a physio does. 
uh, any questions uh, of a more general nature, just ask me after we finish the uh, introductions. Hello, my name is Mary Butler. As you'll notice, I'm from Ireland, from my accent. Um, I recently have come over from New Zealand, where I spent the last 30 years. So my career in occupational therapy has taken me through many different countries, from Ireland to Scotland to New Zealand and now to Australia. Um, I've moved over here to start the programme in occupational therapy, so I'm the programme head for occupational therapy. Um, I've also had a career of about 30 years, like Paul, and um, when I started occupational therapy, I thought I was going to do mental health. And I did start off in child psychiatry, did a lot of play therapy, but found that a lot of the children had brain injury and ended up spending the following two decades and most of my research in brain injury. And then I found that there was a gap in New Zealand in particular about visual impairment. And so I've spent about a 10 years specialising in visual impairment. And through all of that, I've been able to weave an academic and a research career. Um, yeah, our students started all together, occupational therapy with the physio and the speech pathology students. They're mixed in together. They're really enjoying themselves. They've had practical experiences. So some of our students have been able to, for example, get out in wheelchairs and try and see what it's like in terms of accessibility for people with disability alongside their very um, academic subjects in anatomy and physiology and biosciences. So, yeah, we're really looking forward to chatting some more. Thanks all of you for those really lovely introductions. Is there any questions from the floor? Deathly silence. <laughs> so I'm going to start with one. And I'm just wondering, this is a question for you, Paul, and um, something that uh, I've just wondered and, and I've had people ask me. Um, what are the sort of areas that you might work in in physiotherapy? So I know physiotherapists often, you know, we see them in the footy and they're working with the football players, but is there more to it than that? Yeah, there's uh, a wide variety of areas you can work in, almost too many to cover in a short answer. Perhaps I'll give an example from my own career. I started off working in uh, a rural environment. As a new graduate, I was working on Kangaroo Island. Uh, then I was working in private practice for probably about a year or two after that. I then went into the hospital sector, uh, developed an interest in the management of uh, acute injuries, uh, injuries that had happened almost straight away. So one of my roles was uh, treating and managing people, employees within a hospital environment who'd been injured in the care of other patients. I then went on to manage a uh, occupational health department. And in between that, I was also a physio for the, uh, at the Sydney Olympics. I was... Uh, I work with the soccer teams who are based here in Highmarsh. Now, to tell you, during that time, I reckon I saw about two injured soccer players. So it sounds really exciting and glamorous, but it was a lot of sitting around and waiting for someone, I hate to say it, but to be injured, which almost never happened. And then I uh, made a trans transition into a study of ergonomics, which is a study of the work environment, and then into academia. But some of the colleagues I work with specialise in cardiorespiratory, uh, neurology, paediatrics, women's health, burns, intensive care, the, the variety of, of work is bigger than you could possibly imagine at the moment. Thanks for that, Paul. Mary, would you like to just add a little bit around where occupational therapy might take you? Because it's clearly taken you halfway around the world. Oh, I think pretty well the whole way around the world, yeah. So, so things that, um, I mean, I think I've had a fairly broad experience, but there are lots of other areas that occupational therapy work within. So there is the mental health focus that occupational therapists bring to their work. In almost everything they do, they're thinking about people's cognitive and mental health um, in terms of well-being. But you can also work with from paediatrics through right through to older people's care. I always say if you can work with older people, you can work with anybody. That's going to bring up every single condition you could ever imagine. You can work with in neurology. Um, you can work in um, acute care. You can work um, in uh, rheumatology. Um, you work a lot in the community, um, often with people in their own homes. Um, so for example, if somebody comes into hospital and they've, for example, broken their hip, it's often the occupational therapist who is going out to the home to check that they are able to move home safely. Um, there's other areas of practice, for example, if somebody has a broken arm, for example, 
um, occupational therapists might work with splinting. And so, yeah, I think that the, it, it's, it's a bit like with Paul, there, there is, it's kind of very, very broad. And you can start off in one area of practice and move into others. Thanks for that, Mary. And Stacey, I'm going to get to you, but I know that we've got a question from the online audience. Uh, we do. It's a bit of a two-part question regarding physiotherapy um, from someone who is currently uh, doing tertiary study and would like to know um, if there's the option to transfer into physiotherapy and what GPA uh, they would need to be competitive? Uh, yes, there is the option. Uh, I think this year, probably about a quarter to a third of our students are tertiary transfer students, so that is a possibility. Obviously, your GPA would need to be very competitive, and it depends what program you're coming from. I can't give you a specific GPA because it, it's based on uh, how competitive your specific GPA would be, but it's certainly a possibility. And I would say to that person, if they flick an email to Ask Health Science at Adelaide um, around that specific question, they'll be able to get a, probably a more specific answer from the program advisors. Is there any other questions from our live audience? Sure. <laughs> um, Stacey, I might just get you to talk a little bit about what is the, what is the speech pathology can a speech pathology career look like? What's it like day in, day in the life of? Thanks, Judy. Um, so, like the other allied health professions, um, we, we're a pretty globally useful bunch. Um, so, we work across the lifespan. You'll see speech paths working with babies, um, looking at uh, feeding, swallowing, and attachment. Uh, we work with kids, uh, we work across childcare, um, early intervention, lots of speech paths in schools. Um, and we're working with them around how um, speech, sounds, language and putting everything together to be a communicator works. We also work with kids with feeding problems, um, uh, eating problems, uh, difficulties with, for example, sensation around food, sensation around the mouth. Um, across uh, the school sector, we're working with kids with, with problems with literacy um, or accessing the curriculum in ways that make sense for them. Um, we work really closely with teachers, with special educators as well. As we sort of um, work towards uh, adulthood, we're working around transition into the workplace, again around how it is that people think about communication. We work with um, older adults, for example, in, in similar ways uh, that have been described by Mary and Paul. So uh, people with neurological events or brain injury, um, stroke, dementia, we're, we're really starting to think about what it means to be um, a, a communicator or to have communication impaired, um, and similarly with swallowing. So my own career, um, I specialise in a disease called motor neuron disease, and what I do is I work with um, I work with adults, uh, usually adults, sometimes kids, with motor neuron disease who are making decisions about what they're going to do with eating as that disease takes away their swallowing capacity. So that's the, the kind of work that I do. Um, we work a lot with um, at the end of end of life as well in palliative care. Again, thinking about how it is that um, when people are, are in the terminal phase of their life, the choices that they're making about eating and swallowing and how they're going to communicate those choices. Um, a, a new area of practice for us is uh, working in, uh, in the justice systems. So we're increasingly working with, especially with kids, who are in juvenile detention, and a lot of those kids, it turns out, have got language problems um, which have been never diagnosed. Um, so a lot of the new work we're doing is in that kind of context. Um, and then the other thing we do is we work with people who have no communication capacity around how we can support them to communicate with devices. So you guys might have seen people communicating with iPads or with other, um, other types of devices that help them to to talk. So that's pretty much what we do and, and where we're employed. Thanks very much, Stacey. Now I know we've got another question from the online audience. Uh, we do. This question is in regard to the timing of placement blocks um, and when those occur in the degrees. And was that for any particular program or just generally? Uh, physiotherapy, but I think it'd be good to talk about all of them. Okay, thanks. I'll hand that to Paul. All right. From a, a physio perspective, we start students start observational placements in the first semester of first year. So our first cohort are just finishing a uh, four-week 
one half day a week observational block at the, at the moment. So we expose people to their real environment as early as possible so they can see the variety of work that might be available to them in the future. The longer uh, five week placements generally happen in from the second half of third year. And there's either five or six placement blocks to be completed during the last 18 months of the program. And they're across neurology, acute care, paediatrics, women's health, uh, there's another vital, cardiorespiratory, and usually one or two elective options as well. That's pretty much how the physiotherapy program runs. First two and a half years is uh, a lot of theory, but interspersed with the observational placements and then intensive placement blocks after that. Thanks very much, Paul. Stacey, can I get to talk, you to talk to that from Speech Pathology, please? Sure. Um, so Speech Path will have six placements. The first two of those will start in Year 3, um, and though the first two placements will be uh, a day a week that spans both semesters. So essentially from the beginning of, of um, Year 3, you guys will be on placement from that time. In our final year, we have four placement blocks. Um, those are uh, 20 days each. And essentially what we're doing with students is working um, across the, the professional standards, so the, the, the competencies that we work to from a speech pathology viewpoint, to expose students to lots of different areas across those four block placements. Um, and we, we work developmentally so that students are, are scaffolded um, to move from being beginning speech pathologists to being entry speech pathologists at the end of the program. Um, so you'll see um, placements in mental health, in aged care, in hospitals, in schools, uh, in childcare, uh, in uh, uh, I've also I'm starting a placement with correctional uh, services as well. So all over the place, um, and not necessarily specified in the same way that physio is. So we've got a little bit more um, scope to do some really creative things with placement. And Mary for occupational therapy. So from next year, we will have an observational placement in first year, which will then mean that we'll have placements in each of the four years. So there'll be an observational in first year, a community development placement in second year, where you go out for half a day a week for eight weeks to help a community to develop an activity. So it gives you hands-on um, doing something in the second year. In the third year, we'll have half-day placements throughout the year, but we'll also have a lot of simulation work where you will practice skills much more intensively, in particular areas where we know students might have difficulty by the time they're going out to fourth year. In fourth year, you'll have four different placements spanning the year, most of the year, except for one block. Um, in the centre of the year, you will actually be out on placement. In total, you'll have at least 1,000 hours of fieldwork placement during your training. Yeah. Thanks very much. Uh, any other questions? Have any of those answers sparked questions at all? Okay, well, I might leave it there and hand it back to Domenica, who will wrap us up for the day. Thank you, Judy, and thank you to the, the program heads. <coughs> That concludes our session for today. Thank you to our presenters, audience members, both online and in person. Our virtual audience can continue to add any further questions in the comments section of the video. We invite those of you here today to spend some time exploring the AHMS building. And if you have any further questions, join us in the booth in the foyer. For more information about Allied Health and other health-related degrees, visit our website, health.adelaide.edu.au.